All right, what's up everybody? I've spent the entire day today absorbing information about Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2 from the COD Next Showcase event, and now I will attempt to disseminate it into your brains directly through this video. So hold on tight, we've got a lot of information to get through. This is all about Warzone 2. Check out the video I did about Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer earlier. Here we go. First thing, new map. It's called Al Mazra. It's a mostly desert map with some environments that are a little bit different scattered throughout. It's got rubble, it's got plains, it's got a city, it's got a couple different old school Modern Warfare 2 maps like Terminal, High Rise, but again mostly desert, so something different than any of the Warzone maps we've seen so far. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Deserts can get kind of bland, kind of boring, but hey, we'll see how we like it. I'm sure more maps will come at some point. So that's the map, Al Mazra. There is an ocean part of the map, there is a river that once runs through the map that you can swim through, that you can pilot boats through, uh, and that leads me to the first thing I want to cover with it, which is my major concerns about Warzone 2. Boats being one of them, tanks being one of them, yes, tanks. I don't like the idea of having overpowered vehicles in Warzone. It just adds to the RNG, I feel like it adds to the uh, unpredictability, the the imbalance, right? We don't want more imbalance in Warzone, and boats and tanks are looking pretty powerful. So there's that. The next major concern I have, and this is probably the most concerned I am about this game, and probably the absolute worst thing about this game that they have done, Gulags are now 2v2, meaning in the original Warzone, Right, the war zone we have now, you die, you go to the gulag, you have a 1v1 against another player, whoever wins goes back to the game. In, in Warzone 2, you die, you go to the gulag, you're paired up with a random teammate who is also in the gulag, and you go up against two other random people who are paired up, and you essentially have a 2v2 deathmatch. You pick up guns off the floor and you try to shoot each other, all the while, by the way, being shot at and distracted by AI bots who are also in the gulag with you trying to kill you. So everything about this sounds absolutely trash. I don't want to be paired up with a random person I now depend on to, to help me save my life, right? They could be horrible. AFK, they could be anything. The gulag was already bad enough at some points with the randomness and the RNG. Now you're telling me I have to, I'm basically queuing into a, a random deathmatch with random people whose skill is unknown to decide the fate of my Warzone experience. Experience. That is a horrible idea, and I hope they change it. I don't even want to talk about putting AI in the gulag. How stupid is that? Uh, I will try not to get too much more worked up about it. It's extremely disappointing the way that they have done the gulag. I think game developers nowadays have a bad habit of just loving RNG and, and the uh, excitement of luck. I hate it. Uh, I'm not playing Mario Party in 2009. I don't feel like having the fate of my game decided by luck. And uh, I think many of us feel the same way. Anyway, another thing about the gulag is that there is a key in the gulag held, I think, by an AI bot. I could be wrong about that, uh, but there is a key, and if you grab that key, you can physically exit the gulag by finding the door, unlocking it, and physically leaving, and thereby winning your gulag. That's one of my major concerns. Gulag sucks. Um, next thing, Dead Silence is still in the game and probably stopping power too. Disappointing that they're not taking that out of Warzone, as it's obviously OP and RNG based success. There are some parts of the map that are covered with bushes that you can easily prone in and not be seen, which is another disappointing thing that how do we not think of this as developers. It just feels super lame to get shot by a guy prone in a bush, right? Another thing, gas mask is the same. There is still an animation that you cannot control when you are <clears throat> leaving the gas or entering the gas. Uh, it can mess you up. Okay, so that's it for my major concerns at this moment. I'm sure I will come up with some more complaints at some time because I am an incredibly cynical individual. But for now, let's move on to the things that I just plain found interesting about this game. These are kind of some big changes that will be a part of Warzone 2. Uh, first of all, the loadout. It doesn't appear that there is an actual loadout drop in the game. You can ac acquire loadout weapons by either assaulting a black site on the map controlled by AI, uh, and by beating those AI, you can have access to some weapons that, that are higher quality, either loadout weapons or special weapons. Um, it also looks like you can buy and upgrade individual weapons at the buy station. That could be interesting, but um, a it seems like there's much more emphasis on ground loot in this uh, iteration of Warzone rather than you know getting your loadout in the first 30 seconds of the game, which 
I think might be a cool change. Another thing a lot of people are really excited about is the addition of proximity chat. I don't know the radius that uh, an enemy has to be within in order for you to hear them talk on comms, um, but that obviously has some uh, potential to be hilarious. Another thing that's really interesting that they've added is a splitting circle, okay? So normally in every battle royale, you've got a circle that closes you closer and closer together till the end when there is no room left. Now, af after a few uh, closings of the gas circle, the circle actually splits into three separate circles. It, it creates kind of like three individual end games, and then they converge back into one circle for the final a uh, couple of circles and it ends that way. So you kind of separate into three mini games and then finish the game based on whoever is the winner of those three kind of separate areas, which I think is kind of cool. Um, it might be horrible, who knows? We'll have to see how that plays out. Next thing I think is really cool is vehicles can be damaged and repaired and they have to be refueled at gas stations. So you can shoot wheels off, you can shoot doors off, individual parts of your vehicle can be damaged. Uh, which I think is really cool, adds to the, you know, immersion. And I think ultimately the refueling is really important because it's going to reduce the amount of vehicles you have towards the end of the game because not everybody's going to be able to make it to the gas station or take the time to go to the gas station and refuel their vehicle. Especially in solos, the end games can tend to be just filled with people driving trucks around um, that are semi-invulnerable, and that's really annoying. So that's cool. Movement-wise, obviously no slide canceling, just the same as the multiplayer. They did add ledge hanging and mantling, which is also in the multiplayer. It seems like you can kind of jump up and mantle things that are a little bit higher than your head. You can also ledge hang on them, so very, very similar to Apex. And there's actually multiple things that they've done to make it more like Apex, which as an Apex fan, I quite like. Uh, another kind of movement kind of Another kind of movement thing has to do with vehicles. It's uh, you're now able to lean outside of vehicles to shoot out of them. It's, it's kind of PUBG-esque, or I don't think you can shoot inside the vehicle anymore. It seems like you have to lean out the window. It makes you more vulnerable instead of having just a rolling tank. Okay, so now for the looting system, which they've also kind of made more like Apex. There is a backpack system now instead of just a standard inventory. Your backpack determines how many slots you have. Also, it's the same with armor. So in the first war zone, you had three armor slots. That's it. Nothing changes. In this war zone, it looks like you can have either two or three armor slots. Everybody starts with a two armor slots and by picking up a higher end plate carrier, by looting a plate carrier that's better, you then are able to put three plates in your plate carrier and therefore have more health. So a little bit more traditional BR. Looting in general has changed slightly to a more loot box style where you do have to interact with containers. It doesn't just spew loot everywhere around it when you open things you interact with a box and it pops up a little menu where you take things out of it. Not like, you know, an old school looting system where you click and drag, you just simply click and it goes in and then you can access your inventory and click and it'll drop on the floor. So some stuff is on the floor, some stuff is in loot boxes, but when stuff is in a container, it seems like you generally have to interact with it. Same with when you die, when you are full killed, you don't just spew your loot everywhere. You drop a backpack in which your loot resides and your teammates can interact with it and take stuff out, blah, blah, blah. I think that's kind of nice because it reduces the clutter of the stuff on the ground. And the last thing I want to mention that also does apply to the Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer, uh, but probably is more significant in Warzone itself, in Warzone 2. The, the kind of general universal recoil seems to be more in this game. Automatic weapons are less effective at range simply because there's a lot of recoil and it's accentuated in Warzone because you're not going to have full attachment kitted guns every time. So recoil is going to be more of a problem, which I think is good because being able to hose down someone at 200 meters with an LMG just isn't cool. Anything that adds a skill gap to the game, I'm all in favor of and certainly having more recoil as long as it's consistent is a skill driving mechanic that will make it more fun for every Everybody. So the reliance on snipers will probably be higher. So there you go. That's a lot of information and that's not all of it. Those are just the things that I thought were the most interesting and the most different. I'm super excited to get into it. Overall, it seems really fun. Kind of a throwback to battle royales of yesteryear. The gulag thing is really going to keep me up at night. But other than that, I, I've got high hopes. So that's it for now. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. There's plenty of things that I either forgot or didn't mention. Join the discord in the description. Hit up the Twitch channel where I do this stuff live and I will see you later.